Rose and Kimmy. Why are you gargoyling? He's on top of my bookcase for reference. That's the ceiling. And in case if you're ever wondering, the tape spots are where they uh, had pulled cable through. They needed to make a couple of holes in order to make and to pull the network cable through. Good kitten internet. So this was the case that I was planning on using. Um, I this isn't the motherboard I'm planning on using. This is the one that was in the other one. It just happened to be handy. In fact, that's actually the motherboard I'm planning on using. It's in this computer right now. Anyway, um, with the video card that I was planning on using, and the problem is that this doesn't quite fit. So this gap down here is for power supply, so imagine that's not there. I mean, I would have a little bit of space back here, but there's not enough space for this. Oh, maybe there is. Never mind. So what I was thinking about doing, because unfortunately this was bigger than I thought, was something like this. Putting this upside down on top of the video card. The problem is that the power cables are in the way. These. Even with removing the little add-on card thing. But maybe I can get it in that corner. Hold on. So, mocking it up a little bit more, I threw in the power supply. Nothing screwed in other than the video card, since <clears throat> that way everything's generally in the right spot. And this does not fit. It is off by less than a centimeter. If I put it in upside down, I would have to put it in what direction did I figure out? I think like this would be the closest. And even then, uh, or sorry, like this, like squeezing it, trying to heat, fit the heat sink between it and the power cord. It, yeah, no, that's not fitting. So the only place that inside of this case that it would fit would be over here. And the problem with over here is that I'm blocking the CPU fan partially. Uh, the other fan that I have, I'm pretty certain I'm pretty certain it's blocking. I should go measure that. One moment. All right, so 15 and a half centimeters is where um, the heat sink comes up to in the motherboard I'm trying to use. I'm just using my T-square here. And I measured this border over here already. It's the same. So that part's fine. So 15 and a half's fine. But the problem is that the thin client is currently overlapping the side. I would actually... Oh, no, actually, I think it will work. Oh, that's going to be really tight, if it works at all. Mm. Real problem, though, is this area here. Ignore the dust, please, because... Uh... Anyway, um, so this is the front panel of the case here. Let me move around to the other side of the case so you can see what I mean. Um, so this is the front panel of the case. And my plan is that this is going to come out, and I'm going to have my own front panel that will have the um, USB ports that I want and power switches. The problem is really simple. There's not going to be enough clearance for me to have anything here. Basically, from... Sorry, I'm zoomed out a bit. Uh, let's see. Let's see this way to see. Yeah, like this. So from this edge into the... Uh, sorry, this is really difficult to do while I'm holding a camera. So from here to here is as much clearance as I get. Anything else outside of here is almost certainly going to end up being used by the thing client. So I don't know if that's going to fit. So what I'm planning on doing is to build myself a shelf temporarily. This is the base of the thin client. See? I cut it out earlier. And I'm going to also point the... I gotta find a cap for that. Um, point that elsewhere so it's not pointing at me. This would be about right for Lego. Lego, the best rapid prototyping plastic material I have. Ding! There we go. This is the same size as this. Not height-wise, just dimensions. So, this is 21 by 21 Lego bricks. 21 wide, 
21 tall, or 21 width, 21 height. Now I need depth. I'm going to basically build this up high enough where I can kind of create a tray to visualize how this is going to fit. And they said I was daft for building this out of Lego. Well, I showed them. Anyway, um, so this is roughly what it would end up looking like. Um, Height-wise, I know I'm okay, so I'm not going to be too concerned about that. But I wanted to visualize this. Yeah, this is not exactly the most stable thing in the world. Okay, so first off, I'm going to need to rotate this. So my intent is to have the I.O. either facing to my right or toward the camera. So for the time being, I'm going to have it face toward the camera because it looks prettier. Also, this slid. Okay, this needs to slide forward. These cables are constantly trying to get in the way. Uh, okay, so this is generally what the plan is, and like I said, height-wise, I'm not concerned. I, the Lego is a little tall, so this is my intent. Um, I still don't know how I'm going to handle the power switch, though. That's going to be a problem. So all of the other devices, when you provide power to it, it turns on. This thing client actually needs the little power button in order to turn on, I think. I'm going to see if I can try to configure it where it doesn't need it. But yeah, this is generally where I think it's going to have to go. So I'm going to need to build a tray for this, hold it onto the tray, which I think the best way of doing that is going to be using the foam core that I have. Uh, but I don't know how this side is going to be held up. Unfortunately, I have a fan over there. And even if I didn't, like, for instance, this side, which doesn't have the fan, there's nothing for it to hold on to. There's nothing on the side. So I don't know how I'm going to get this thing client to be held up in the air like this. <sighs> also, I don't know if this is going to be enough space for this to get out. I might need to scrap some of my ideas. Grr, do you see why I was screaming earlier now? Yeah. So, at the moment I'm working out the switching, or the thing that's going to be going on the front panel. This is a blank front panel. This is just a piece of plastic, nothing special. And when I measure this... Let's get this to move around. Apologize for the shaky camera. When I measure the inside of this, I'm going to go over a little bit. I am estimating that little line to the right of the half. So that would be five and five eighths inches. I hate using freedom units, but this is the only mat I have that measures inches. I don't have a mat that measures centimeters. I have a T-square that measures centimeters, though. Hold on. Let me grab that. It's underneath the Lego box. Okay, let's use real free units for a moment. So, the inside of this is, we'll call it 14 centimeters. It's a little bit over, but 14 centimeters is good. The reason why I was using inches, though, is that this is a USB to USB header adapter. Um, I actually have two of these. Unfortunately, I don't think I can use the other one. I'll show that off in a moment. But these are pretty much exactly the type of mounts that I want. Each of these is an inch and a half long, or in real people units, right about three and some chain, a little over three and a half centimeters. We'll call it 3.6 centimeters. So if this is 17 centimeters, and each ones of these are 3.6 centimeters, I assume. Uh, then three of these, uh, three times 36 is 108, so 10.8 centimeters. I would have seven centimeters left of this if I just put three side by side. However, that's not the only thing that's going in here. So the plan, and um, me from the future, go ahead and show the image that I was thinking of. 
So the plan is that I want three of these plus three of these. And that's the part I don't know if they fit. <sighs> so this is really hard to measure, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to call this a little under 2 centimeters. So, with 10.8 centimeters, I would have 6.2 centimeters left. This will fit, in theory, three of them. Barely. I'll have very little space on this. Hopefully my drawing plan comes out the same way, because I just... I'm drawing it in advance. I had some plans before, but I needed to change them. And Isun will not stop crying. He wants all the attention. So this is the other one that I have. Um, this is two um, USB outputs, or inputs, for something that's too wide. I can't move this. This is one solid piece of rubberized plastic. But this is smaller than the equivalent four of these. So what I think I may end up doing is snipping this little wire tie, then using this for both devices. So the two devices, I have one header on the NUC. The header's right there. I'm pretty certain that's the header for this, at least. And then one header on the thing client. Where, where did I put the thing client? Oh, there it is. I actually have two headers on the thing client. They're right here. They're even color-coded to match. But I don't really have a need to use both of these. I, I somehow doubt I'm going to need three USB ports. And if I do, I can use USB Hub. Also, I think these might actually be USB 1. Not sure. Not that it's going to matter, but it's interesting though. So... Yeah, I think this is probably going to be the route that I go, just because I forgot that, well, I can actually plug this into two different things. It just means that the cable lengths are short, so I'm going to need to make sure I don't go too far. Hmm. But the plan that I have, see if I could do this, so have USB ports. This is going to be on the bottom, but there's no way I can show you otherwise. And power switch underneath or on top of each pair of USB ports, kind of like that. So one power switch here, one power switch here, and then a third power switch for the Raspberry Pi over on the right. The problem is that I don't have a power switch that's going to work for the NUC, because the NUC is using 19 volts for power and I don't have a way of dealing with that. So I still need to figure that out. The other option I have is using this. So this right here is actually how NUCs are powered if you put them into something else. But I haven't found documentation as to how this works. And my lack of soldering skill means that I'm going to have to do some research. See if I can find something pre-made. Alright, since nothing dealing with the stupid thing client is working the way I want it to, I'm going to work on the NUC for a bit. So, I haven't really explained our third hen yet. Apologies for the shadow, the sun decided to actually come out and play. So, this is the NUC. It is an Intel Core i3-3217, which is a really weird model. It's basically only for this and I think one random other embedded purpose. Uh, it has 4 gig of RAM. It can have a maximum of 8, but this particular one has two 2 gig sticks of RAM. And, uh, thanks to a friend of mine, it's totally upside down so you can't read it, but that is a 128 gig MSATA, or MSATA, stick of RAM. MSATA. Anyway, or stick of RAM. God damn it, brain. SSD. So, what I'm planning on doing with this is installing Windows XP. Yep, that's pretty much it. I just want to make sure that it works. I have turned it on and saw that something came up, but that's about it. So let's go ahead and well, let me... So I've been doing this using my video capture device so I can easily record things. And I just haven't bothered with... Um, whatchamacallit? Uh, 
having any type of display output beyond the video capture device. Because why bother? Just not worth it. All right, I uh, apologize if the audio quality is a little low. I'm just using the onboard sound microphone from my laptop. I'm plugging in now. Let's find out how well this works. Well, it's definitely turning on. Looks like digital media solutions of some variety, and it's serving Windows XP. I'm going to yank the power right now because I didn't realize there was an operating system on that. So, okay, I need to go plug in a keyboard. That would make sense. I will be right back. All right, so I've plugged in my little dongle for keyboard and mouse, and also a flash drive that has uh, Linux Mint on it. Older distro of Linux Mint, I should say. Just happened to be what was handy. Uh, and it'll do for making sure everything's working on this. So let's find out. All right, let's go ahead and power this bad boy on again. Are you a bad boy? No, you're a nice laptop. Trying to hit BIOS, I don't know what key is required for hitting BIOS, not that one. Let's see if I can figure this out. Well, I hit one key at least. Um, no, I didn't mean to do that. Is it F2? F1? F2? One of those two. Okay. So, um, we've got the, the mm, SATA boot drive. We've got a USB 3.0 flash drive plugged in. We have a gigabit Ethernet adapter, which will not be in use for this. And it detected that there's a bootloader on my flash drive. Fans going at fairly high RPM. I don't think you can hear it from the microphone. It's not that loud, luckily. Uh, has 4 gig of RAM, as expected. GK, okay, that's a slightly different model than I was told. Which should be fine, mind you, that the models are all identical for anything that I care about, but I pulled up the wrong set of specs for it. Okay. So Intel actually gives you a lot of this information, which is really nice. Um, I just opened up the wrong PDF then. Let's see if I can grab the correct PDF then. Uh, was, that was a GKE, let's say. Yeah, GKE, okay. So the one I opened up was a different set of letters at the end. I somehow doubt there's much of a difference. Um, honestly, I don't even know what the difference would be. So this has a Core i3-3217. Uh, that's fine. Um, I am really not seeing much of a difference here. I have no idea. Okay. That's fine. Meow. Meow. This one is very, very noisy today. Okay. So anyway, um, let's see what else we got here. Um, let's go to advanced setup. All right. Uh, looks like processor clock speed is set at 1.7 gigahertz. Um, only 512 meg of cache, or 512 kilobytes of cache. Okay. And 3 meg of L2 or L3. Yep. As expected, two 2 gig sticks. I mean, it's visible to me, but whatever. Um, 4 gig of RAM, which is what I wanted it to have. Looks like the system BIOS is still accurate, given that that is the correct time in the wrong time zone. Very wrong time zone, actually. That's weird. Helps if I actually use the right keyboard, doesn't it? Uh, it's not working anyway. Eh, it doesn't matter. I can set the time later. Uh, USB legacy support. Is there anything else on here I cared about? No. Um, we will have the default page be here. Sweet. So, um, as mentioned, Legacy like USB support, which is what I want it to have. Um, it has all five USB ports enabled, which, so it has, as moused over, um, back panel ports are port one and two, front panel ports are point five, and the two onboard ports front panel are three and four. Huh. Okay. 
We've got the one SATA drive, and that's fine. Our options are AHDI and IDE. Okay, we'll probably need to change this to IDE because I don't know if I can find the and slipstream the XP drivers for this. Uh, integrated graphics, always enable. Yes, please. Please use the maximum amount of RAM. Primary video port auto. I am not a developer, I'm not going to worry about that. All right, the only onboard device it's detecting is LAN, which is fine. And PCI slot timers, okay. Cooling. Uh, there's the fan speed that it's running at. Temperatures, it is actually climbing on temperature. I'm kind of surprised. Um, duty cycle, can I drop this? It is not letting me edit any of that. Okay, that's not what I wanted to see. Oh well. All right. Um, this would actually, in theory, allow me to drop processor speed. Allows me to reduce number of cores to one. That might end up being useful for us. Um, oddly enough, if I can drop this further, I might be able to make this work for DOS. I wouldn't have any audio, though. That's probably going to be a deal breaker. Yep, uh, everything looks like it's set for default settings. Huh. I wonder if I can make any changes here. Hmm. I might have to switch out of the visual one and go into the real one. Not really real. Anyway, uh, let's see, user access level is view only. No, we want user access level to be full access. Thank you very much. Um. I don't want any passwords on here. Intel Dissipit, Intel VT. I wonder if I'm actually going to keep this as an XP machine or if I'm actually going to use Windows 7 or even Windows 10 on it. In theory, this should actually work with Windows 10. I've just never tried. All right, I want this to be low power for the power efficiency. The reason for this um, high performance allows it to run at um, maximum speed. I don't particularly care if it's running at maximum speed because this is so much faster than what a normal XP machine would be that low power is probably exactly what I want. We'll find out for sure later. Can I customize this any further? I don't want it to have Smart Connect enabled. I want Speed Step enabled. And Rapid Start Technology, yes, please. Okay, that's fine. After power failure, power on. This is the way I want it. That This is the feature I was trying to find for the thin client. I'm sure it exists. I just don't know where. Okay, all of this is fine. Boot. Nope, I don't want that. display text only during boot that is fine actually I can customize my own boot display which is nice I just need to figure out how I did have documentation on how to do that so that shouldn't be too hard all right that should be okay Let's go ahead and save and exit. I think BIOS is F2, but I'm going to try this out now. Yeah, fan's definitely still going. Yep, yeah, BIOS is F2. Classic mode. There we go. This is more what I wanted to see. It's a little easier for me to find what I can edit and what I can't edit. Um, looks like I can, okay, I can edit the memory timing, which is not really what I care about, to be honest. 
I would much prefer to be able to edit the CPU timing and drop it down, but this was around the time that Intel started locking all of that down anyway. Okay, um, I'm pretty sure I've already changed everything I care about, so go ahead and exit, discarding changes, yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna have to figure out how to change that. I know there's a way. This is Obviously this used to be used as digital signage. All right, let's go ahead and boot into Linux. And then I'm going to wipe the drive and stop recording because I only have an hour until I have people arrive for board gaming and I have accomplished next to nothing today. Well, while that's booting, I'm going to switch back to the camera. All right, so um, Linux is booting at this point. Um, everything looks to be fine. And this is probably the easiest component for me to edit because all I'm doing is installing Windows XP. XP is easy to install by comparison to any of the other crap that I'm working on. I'm really curious to see if I can figure out a way to make FreeDOS work properly, but FreeDOS is going to require me to have some type of shim to allow me to use a USB audio device. I don't think those exist. Um, if they do, I actually own one, which is nice. Um, I own a USB audio device that is actually a Sound Blaster 16 equivalent, so it shouldn't be too bad. I'm currently editing, uh, uh what is that called? Oh, my brain is not working today. You know what? I am just going to find it the hard way. G-parted, that's what I wanted to find. Okay, um, sweet, all of this is going away. I did promise that I would wipe the drive upon touching it, and that is exactly what I'm going to do. We are going to create a new FAT32 partition of the entire size. And that is okay with me. And apply all. Apply all operations, yes please. There we go. Now data is gone. I mean, yeah, it's still undeletable, but I will make sure that won't happen later. All right, this should be ready for XP. That's a scary thought. Um, I know this video has been very disorganized, and that's because uh, a lot of things happened that I wasn't expecting. I apologize. Um, I need to stop getting in the habit of apologizing all the time. It's not my fault that things didn't work out the way I was expecting. That kind of what makes it an interesting video. I'm just not very good at organizing at that point. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and shut this machine down. Shut down. I mean, obviously it booted. Um, there's not really much to this machine, so that's hardly surprising. And yeah, that should be about it. Oh, I actually found the power switch on the NUC, by the way. It's on the underside, so if I do need to manually turn it on, I can. Uh, I think it's about time that I'm going to need to borrow the use of a 3D printer. Also, why is that fan still going? Can you hear it through the camera? This mic? Oh, that's actually my laptop. So there's three laptop. Stupid lighting. Um, there's actually three laptops running here. There's my laptop, which is right there. There's my work laptop, which is over there because I'm still on call. And then there's the NUC. I called it a laptop. I'm I'm going to go away now before I make even more mistakes. Bye, internet. One last thing. I decided to keep working a little bit. Uh, Totally running late and then won't have things cleaned up for board game night. And I haven't had any dinner, but I just couldn't get this out of my head. So I started mocking up with the thicker foam what the front panel would look like. Here's the two sets of USB ports. Um, left one is going to be for the um, NUC. Right one will be for the thin client. Here's the power switch that's going to be for the card reader and two USB ports of the Raspberry Pi. That's the current plan, and... Yeah, it's looking like a project now. Hooray! Only difficulty that I'm still trying to figure out is how am I going to run the power switch?
Anyway, people are returning. Bye!